Joining me live from Capitol Hill, South Dakota Republican Senator Mike Rounds, who's a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee, the Foreign Relations Committee, and the Banking Committee. Senator, thank you for being here. You were in a classified intelligence update last night. I'm not going to ask you to reveal what was said, but what can you tell us about the state of the conflict? Well, right now the Ukrainians are putting up one heck of a fight. Uh, they're defending their homeland, and it is coming as what we believe a surprise to the uh, the Russians. Uh, what could have been, uh, in best case scenario for Russia, uh, Mr. Putin's forces may very well have been able to get to Kiev within the first 48 hours. But what we're finding right now, it's day six, and the Ukrainian forces are defending it, they're fighting tooth and nail. And that's one thing that you can't uh, count on when you start making the analysis of how quickly one army could overwhelm another army. Uh, uh, right now, they are, the, the Ukrainians are fighting and they're getting some resupplies from uh, our NATO allies and so forth, and that appears to be making quite a difference. Well, uh, again, we do have the, these Russian nuclear threats. Putin has been very clear that he has now put them on alert. Does that really mean, uh, Senator, that at some point, no president and no chancellor and no leader can actually promise that their troops from NATO countries will not enter the Ukrainian battle. Well, right now what he has done is, is say, what he's doing is he's talking about it. And what they're doing are, are exercises, but that doesn't mean that we're not watching him very, very carefully. Uh, but that means that if you're talking about the possibility of a nuclear activity, then that's an entirely different issue than uh, having NATO move into to Ukraine. And, and I think they, while it doesn't sound like they're separate, they are identified and they're maintained separately. We look at any threat, uh, which is nuclear in nature, as being very, very serious. But as the president indicated earlier, he said, you know, we're not anticipating a nuclear conflict. And But right now, that, that we don't know exactly what Mr. Putin is going to be doing. He has been uh, uh, rather unusual lately in terms of what he has actually been doing compared to what he has in the past. Mm. He made a very serious misjudgment in terms of what his capabilities sure were with regard to Ukraine. And I think there's a number of people wondering whether or not there's something there that just simply is amiss. And he is cold, he is calculating, he is a murderer, he's a killer. We've known that. But we haven't seen him make these types of blunders in the past. And so when we talk about this, what, do you, what happens when you have an individual like that, when they're not successful in doing what they had planned on doing and when their attacks fall behind? And then what happens next? Uh, uh, what do they do if they get to that point where they don't know what they should be doing next? And, when they start making threats uh, in, a, in an area to either draw attention away from the conventional war going on or perhaps looking to see whether or not it right, draws right. our attention away from what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, to the sanctions, because uh, President Biden, of course, gives his first uh, State of the Union address tonight of this year, and uh, we know that the sanctions at least are causing some financial pain. Russia's stock market for the second day straight unable to open, cannot function, and uh, the ruble is absolutely tanking. It is uh, showing extreme weakness here, the likes of what we've not seen in many, many years. It's worth less than a single penny to the U.S. dollar. Mitch McConnell is saying, of course, as a Republican, that he supports what President Biden is doing as far as the sanctions are concerned. Could this actually mean that we will hopefully at least not eliminate the, the difference between Republicans and Democrats, but narrow the aisle and bring everyone together. With regard to the sanctions that have been imposed right now, the impacts are going to be longer term, but they are working in the same way that we had hoped that they would. But there's more that could be done and that should be done right now. And that has to do, why in the world are we still importing 4% of our petroleum products from Russia? Why haven't we shut that off? Uh, why is it that we're not producing enough petroleum and natural gas here to actually help our European neighbors to wean themselves away from Russia. Number one, let's get the Keystone Pipeline working again. Let's open up the leases again on uh, the federal lands. Let's send a message in terms of the futures on oil prices that we're going to become the largest producer and absolutely we're going to be able to overtake and we'll make the price of oil and gas come down again, which means Mr. Putin won't have the money uh, to fund his war efforts. But it also means that it will impact his economy directly, mm. both of which should be done right now. And besides that, the silver lining in that is, is you'd actually start bringing inflation in this country under control. Yeah, that that has nice. to happen yet. And right now the administration is indicating that 
they're still going to worship at the altar of climate change, and we think that's got to change. Yeah, and the Federal Reserve needs to, to jump in here and, and actually even just a quarter of a point at least start to tamp down inflation. Senator Rounds, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.